Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the eighth episode of the story in which Naruto sets out to discover his true reason for being Hokage. Look out, Ninja World! A new Naruto Uzumaki has arrived. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Naruto panted as he watched the rubble that had been a boulder less than a minute ago. His right arm shook violently, blood ran from his shoulder to his wrist, Pieces of skin had been peeled off and his black glove had been left in tatters. The chunin bit his lip, trying to keep his discomfort a secret from his master. Jiraiya stood behind Naruto with his arms crossed. His apprentice had asked him to see the jetsu he had come up with. He had thought that it was a new kind of sexy jetsu so he left with an eager smile. When he saw that Naruto was focusing chakra and creating something similar to the Raisin his smile faded to be replaced by a serious look. It wasn't until the aftermath of the attack that he had seen just how reckless it was, using it would only risk Naruto's life in the end. It had been an impressive jutsu, one of destructive power that not only penetrated its target but also did internal damage. He could tell that he had gotten his inspiration from the Chidori and Raisin but perfecting this jutsu would require a lot more training, years even. I forbid you from using it again, Jiraiya suddenly announced, shocking Naruto. W what? Why? Naruto asked in slight irritation. He had worked hard on coming up with the jutsu for it to be just tossed aside like a failed experiment. Jiraiya sighed. It's way too dangerous to use, he began with a frown on his face, you have to have a lot more chakra control if you want to ever using it again. How do you think you got those wounds on your arm? Your wind manipulation is not perfect and that's why it backfired on you. Fine. Naruto muttered with his arms crossed. Jiraiya frowned, he knew that Naruto was disappointed at having his first original jutsu shut down like that. No matter how old you were, it always hurt whenever someone pointed out the flaws of something you worked hard to do. How's this? You can't use it on any fight except for when it's an emergency, Jiraiya sighed out. Naruto instantly perked up and looked exited before the sage pointed a finger at him, but you have to remember that it will take you out of a fight if you use it. Make sure to have tried all your other jutsu before using this one. I can tell that the jutsu will only get stronger with the proper training, but we'll get to that later on. Don't worry about a thing, Jiraiya-sensei. Naruto replied with a smile on his face, not noticing the slight twitch on Jiraiya's right eye. In flashback, Naruto looked at his enemy with determination burning on his blue eyes. This would be his last shot. He could not fail. His friends were depending on him, and he would never let them down. Wind encircled his right arm, before he began to manipulate it. The wind spun on his arm, making him grit his teeth in pain. He could tell that his skin was already being chirped off by the violent wind on his arm, but he needed to hold on. Katsu smirked as he watched Naruto charge up the attack. It was. Useless now, his master's power was coursing through him and any attempt against him was futile. Nobody could compare to his master's gift. He began to swirl his chakra around him. He would prove his master's powers by using his chakra to block the attack. Naruto smirked. His right arm was covered by a violent wind that circled around his arm, giving it a transparent gray color. This is it, the Chunin announced as he walked towards the sound ninja. You're finished. Naruto broke into a run, holding his arm back. Katsu smirked as he flared his chakra around him, making a deep black orb of pure chakra completely surround him. As the Chunin grew closer, he brought his arm down on the large orb of concentrated chakra, making the chakra around his arm spin uncontrollably. The two different chakras clashed in a fury of wind, creating a small crater, ripping branches from trees and kicking up large clouds of dust. Naruto gritted his teeth as he added more pressure into his punch, making it enter a small part of the orb. Katsu's eyes widened as he watched the fist enter his most powerful defense. Naruto gave a cry of pain as the Cherka cut into his arm before he put even more pressure into it, wanting to get the fight over already. The Chunin's attack continued to push against the orb of chakra until finally a shockwave rocked the area as the attack broke through the chakra orb, revealing a terrorized Katsu with a look of disbelief. Take this. Wind style, drilling fist. 
Naruto roared as his attack met with the man's stomach, instantly digging into his skin. Katsu screamed in agony as the attack dug onto his stomach, breaking tissue and organs alike. Blood shot out of his mouth as the attack dug deeper into him. His insides were in agonizing pain and he could do nothing but watch the now blood-soaked face of Naruto glare at him until he got a look of alarm on his face. Not now. Naruto screamed in his head when he felt his attack losing strength. The wind left little by little until it left nothing but the chunin's bloody arm inside of Katsu. Katsu looked at Naruto when he felt the attack stop. Why you? He began in a look of disbelief before it turned into one of pure anger. You fucking brat. I will kill you for this. The sound ninja took hold of Naruto's right arm, making him scream in pain before he ripped it out of his stomach. He then brought his right fist to the chunin's chest, knocking him several feet back. The blonde chunin fell on the ground with a cry of pain. He looked at his arm only to see tattered skin completely soaked by his and Katsu's blood. Damn it, he muttered as he tried to stand, but was suddenly stopped by a clawed foot on his chest. The chunin screamed as the claws dug into his chest, instantly drawing blood. I will show you true pain, Katsu muttered with hate on his eyes. I took it easy on you before because I was looking for a good fight. He took his foot off the blonde before bringing it down on his chest once more, making him scream in agony, but now I want nothing more than to kill you. The man stomped on Naruto without any mercy. Blood came out of the Chunin's mouth as the punishment continued. He could no longer think straight. His vision grew blurry and his body refused to move. All that was left was pain. Die. Katsu roared as he brought his foot down on Naruto's chest, earning a choked scream from the blonde. The sound ninja smirked before breaking into a laughing fit. Die. 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 He continued to stomp on the leaf ninja before kneeling next to him and grabbing him by the neck. Without hesitation, he brought his fist down on the blonde's face. The sound ninja laughed as he mercilessly punched the semi-conscious Chunin's face. Blood soon covered most of Naruto's face as the sound ninja continued his assault, laughing as he did it. The Chunin felt his body go numb, no longer did he feel the pain or anything else for that matter. He could hear the QB roaring on his cage, telling him to fight back, but he simply didn't have the strength anymore. His eyelids grew heavy as he began to lose consciousness, welcoming the darkness. You bastard, came a loud voice, making Katsu look around in confusion, fong over fong. The sound ninja frowned when he saw two rotating blurs hitting straight for him. I've had enough of you kids. Katsu roared as he charged at the two blurs, dodging one by sidestepping to his left and throwing a chakra-enhanced punch at the other one. He smirked as he watched his fist make contact with the face of a brown-haired ninja with a loud pop. Kiba sailed through the air before crashing headfirst against a tree. He fell limply on the floor, feeling himself losing consciousness. I can't be out yet. He screamed in his head as his blurred vision watched the man walk towards the fallen form of Naruto once more. I have to help Naruto. I might not like him a lot, but he's still my comrade. I can't let him. Die. Kiba. Shikamaru yelled as he ran at the now unconscious Inazuka, Akamaru already by his side giving sad whines. The lazy Chunin gritted his teeth as he looked at his enemy. W. Watt. He choked out when he saw the bloodied form of Naruto. Is this why Kiba ran ahead of us earlier? He wondered as the man turned to him, clearly frustrated. I can't let Ino see Naruto like this. She would just freak out and put the mission in danger. Naruto. Damn it, Shikamaru cursed as Ino ran ahead of him, that idiot. She can't just charge at the enemy. Katsu growled as Ino ran at the unconscious Naruto. You're not going anywhere, he exclaimed as he charged at the Kunoichi. Ino glared at the man and ran through hand signs. Water style, raging waves, she exclaimed as a torrent of water came out of her mouth and pushed the man back, giving her enough room to aid Naruto. Katsu recovered from the attack and tried to charge at Ino but found that his body was unwilling to move. Shadow possession success, came the voice of Shikamaru. Do you really think you can hold me here? Katsu growled in pure anger. That wasn't the plan. 
Choji exclaimed as he charged at the man, using his body expansion jutsu to create a giant fist. He punched at the man, making contact with his chest before knocking him against a tree. Naruto. Ino muttered as she kneeled next to the blonde. Tears fell from her eyes when she saw the condition he was in. His face was bloodied and bruised, his nose was broken, and he had swelling on his left eye. The rest of his body was covered in blood and bruises. his chest was completely bruised with many deep stab wounds, and his right arm looked as if it had been trampled on. Eno, this isn't the time to check on him, Shikamaru urged with a look of worry on his face. Part of him thought that Naruto wasn't even alive anymore. We'll take care of this sound ninja and then take Naruto back to Kanova to get him some medical attention. No. Eno snapped at Shikamaru. I know some of the medical jutsu they taught at the ninja academy. I'm going to heal him. She put her hands around a large gash on Naruto's arm and poured Churka into it, hoping to heal it. They only showed us how to heal minimal wounds, he argued, but found that Eno wasn't even listening to him. There was something that those two weren't telling him, but he would let Eno be for now. She was too distressed to fight either way. Shikamaru, are you done with the base? Came the voice of a tired Niji, accompanied by Lee and Shino. Shikamaru nodded. Tell me about that sound ninja, he ordered with a frown on his face. He's not a normal one. He's the leader of the sound ninja at this base, Niji explained with a serious look. He used a strange chakra to make himself stronger, though it's taking a toll on his body. I'm sure that if we attack the place with the most strain, we'll defeat him. I'm going to need all of your help, Shikamaru stated as he turned to Choji. We're going to keep him in a hold, and then they'll attack at once. Sounds good, Choji replied with a firm nod. I'm going to slaughter you. Katsu roared as his chakra flared once more, knocking away the tree he had crashed into. Let's go. Shikamaru ordered as he took out two kunai and threw them at the man. Smirking when he watched him dodge the projectile, it appeared he hadn't noticed that the first rays of sunlight had filled the area, giving him the perfect fighting field. Choji used his body expansion to grow giant arms before charging at the sound ninja. Katsu smirked when he saw the leaf ninja charge at him, it was too easy. He moved to dodge, but found that his body had been paralyzed once more. Choji's hands instantly wrapped around the man, holding him as tight as possible. This won't hold me for long. Katsu roared in fury before wincing at the bugs latching to his skin, taking away his chakra. He moved against the hold and failed to notice that the bugs had gathered around a certain area of his body, the middle of his chest. As the sound ninja struggled, he suddenly winced in pain, feeling that the wound Naruto had inflicted was acting up. Niji and Lee charged at the man as fast as possible, giving Choji a nod as they grew closer to the man. The jinnin understood and dropped his hold on the sound ninja, who instantly tried to break free of the shadow hold. Shikamaru winced under the strain his jutsu was going through, it was only will that let him keep going. Shikamaru watched Niji and Lee only a few steps away from the man and smiled. Got him, he thought in relief. Lee threw a hard kick at the man's chest, using the momentum of his run to inflict even more damage. Katsu growled in pain as Lee jumped away from him, being replaced by Niji. The Hyuga used a hard pump strike on the same exact spot Lee had just hit before moving away from him. The sound ninja's eyes widened when he felt the pain of Naruto's attack hit him altogether. Screams filled the area as he kneeled on the ground and held his side. It was as if he was reliving the moment it had pierced his stomach. Katsu fell on the ground, feeling the strength of his master leave him. The pain on his stomach came back even stronger than before, making him choke in pain before throwing up. His eyes widened when he saw only blood on the ground. He had thrown up a large pool of blood. What's happening to me? He muttered to himself as his body began to return to normal. That's an easy one, Shikamaru responded with a frown on his face. You were simply using too much of that chakra. From the looks of it, it somehow managed to have your adrenaline going for an unlimited time. You would have died eventually if we didn't stop you. Well, you're still going to die, but you get the idea. The wound on your stomach came full force when we cut off the chakra going through your system, and that's about it. I doubt I'm going. To kill you, Katsu gasped out in pain. Lee moved to where Kiba was, 
carrying him on his back. Niji, Choji, and Shino went to check on Ino and Naruto, leaving only Shikamaru with the man. The lazy Chunin took out two kunai with explosive tags on the handles, twirling them on his fingers. I'm not a very passionate person, Shikamaru admitted with a serious look on his face, but when someone puts my friend's lives in danger then I get mad. The leaf ninja threw the kunai at the man's stomach, digging into the skin on the hole Naruto's attack had left. He then threw the other kunai at the other side of the cliff, near the edge of it. This are some of the explosive tags my friend Naruto gave me. They blow up when you do a certain hand sign. Katsu shook in terror as Shikamaru turned to leave. The lazy Chunin walked to where Naruto was before turning to the sound ninja one last time. The man's eyes widened when he saw him do a hand sign. Boom. Where am I? Naruto asked himself as he opened his eyes. He was met by a dark star-filled sky and the smell of burning wood. He tried to move his arm but stopped when a wave of pain went through his body. His whole body ached terribly, his right arm was annoyingly itchy and his vision was a little blurred. I see you're awake, he heard Shikamaru say. The blonde Chunin turned his head to his right to see Shikamaru sitting on a log with a bored expression on his face. It's been two days since you fell unconscious. Where? Naruto tried to talk but broke into a fit of coughs. His throat was hoarse and his chest hurt terribly with each cough. Where am I? We're only a few hours away from the leaf village, Shikamaru responded. We haven't been able to move fast since we had to carry you and Kiba and we're not exactly in shape right now. We also did our best to heal you guys, but some of your wounds we only managed to wrap in bandages and Kiba. Naruto's eyes widened. What happened to Kiba? He asked in slight worry. Is he all right? Shikamaru nodded as he turned his gaze to the sky. He attacked the sound ninja you were fighting and got badly hurt. He hasn't woken up since then. That's why we have to hurry back to the village, he sighed. Please tell me you'll be able to walk tomorrow. I'm getting tired of carrying you. Naruto chuckled despite himself. Sorry about that. He apologized as he managed to sit up with pain written all over his face. He looked at his body to see that it was mostly bandaged. His right arm was completely covered in bandages, which explained the itchiness. He brought a hand to his face and noticed that it was mostly bandaged too. He sighed. He would need to go to a hospital when he got back, but he didn't want to worry for now. A yawn escaped his lips as he took in his surroundings. He was in a small clearing with his friends fast asleep around the fire. His eyes widened when he didn't see a certain Kunoichi. Where are Ino? Calm down. Shikamaru sighed out. She's right next to you. I can't believe you didn't see her. The blonde Chunin turned to his right to see Ino sleeping with her sleeping bag right next to his. A small smile graced his face and he used his left hand to move away a few strands of her hair that were on her face, liking the feeling of her soft warm skin against his hand. Eno leaned her head against the warm hand, sighing in contempt. What exactly is your relationship with Eno? Shikamaru asked in curiosity, I feel like I'm missing something. Naruto smiled, you don't know the half of it. Orochimaru walked on a mountainous road with a smirk on his face. Next to him walked his assistant Kabuto and the newest addition to the Sound 4, a teen with orange hair and a downcast expression. Is something the matter Lord Orochimaru? Kabuto asked, noticing his master's amused expression. Orochimaru chuckled. It seems as if my little pet, the one called. Katsu, has been killed, he explained with an amused expression. I wonder who was able to kill him. He had a knack for playing around with his foes. Kabuto mused with a smirk of his own. The cursed seal level 3 was far too unstable. That mixed with his overconfidence makes him rather easy to kill once you have him figured out. Right you are Kabuto, Orochimaru praised with a smirk on his face. I think that the world did me a favor by getting rid of that fool. He outlived his usefulness. Are you okay? Ino asked in concern. Yeah, Naruto replied. Are you sure? She asked in worry. Yeah, he replied once again. Are you really sure you're okay? She insisted in a worried tone. Ye dash, he's fine. Came the collective voice of the group of annoyed leaf ninja. Eno crossed her arms and pouted. 
Naruto grinned as he continued to walk with his arm around Ino's shoulder for support. His right arm hung limply on his side, and he had a slight limp as he walked, trying to prevent himself from forcing most of his upper body. He still felt tired from the fight with Katsu, but he would be okay as long as he got to spend time with his friends. He pulled Ino a little closer, trying to get her to calm down. I'm really okay, Ino, he said with the grin never leaving his face. Ino smiled and leaned her head on his shoulder as the two continued to walk lovebirds, snickered the rest of the ninja. As soon as the sun had been out, the group of ninja had set off to Konoha once more. It had been a hectic morning since Naruto had awakened and everyone was asking how he was, Ino being the one to ask the most. She had been ecstatic to have Naruto back and hadn't left his side since morning. Kiba was still unconscious so it was good news that the gates of Konoha were only a few feet away from the group. Long mission guys, asked the guards at the gate, seeing the condition the ninjas were in. You have no idea, Naruto replied with a weary smile. He watched as one of the guards disappeared in a cloud of smoke before reappearing a few moments later with a group of medical ninja. We'll take him to the hospital, one of the medical ninjas said as they took Kiba before disappearing in clouds of smoke. Where do we go from here? Shino asked in his monotone voice. Naruto looked thoughtful for a second before breaking into a grin. I'm going to get some ramen then see the Hokage, how about you guys? Oh no you don't. We're going to the hospital first and then we'll see the Hokage Ino ordered with an angry look on her face. Yes sure, Naruto answered with a nervous look, growling at the snickers coming from his friends. Let's go then, Ino announced as she pulled Naruto towards the hospital, the group following right behind them. It had been a hard mission, but they had pulled through and they were closer than before, understanding each other a little better though Shino, Niji, and Lee still wondered what the red chakra around Naruto was and planned on confronting him about it. A week had passed since the mission to sound, almost two months since they had invaded Kanoha. Things in the leaf were looking much better than before, most of the buildings had been repaired, many ninja had been healed and classes at the ninja academy had begun once more. Kanoha was slowly returning to its former self with the threat of sound disappearing with each passing day. These were the things that Hiruzen Saratobi, the third Hokage, mused as he observed the village from the roof of his office. He closed his eyes and inhaled the contents of the pipe on his mouth. Smoking was one of the things that would relieve his stress nowadays though he knew that it wasn't very healthy. His eyes opened when he heard the sound of footsteps. Did you find anything, Jiraiya? The Hokage asked his old student. Jiraiya smirked from behind his teacher and crossed his arms. He had returned to the village a few days prior and had been told that some documents on the cursed seal had been found. Him being a seal master had been asked to analyze the papers. Not much, he admitted in a light tone, the information found of the cursed seal is pretty outdated. I could probably figure out a way to cancel the new one, but it would take some time. How long? Saratobi asked with a hint of tiredness on his voice. About a year, Jiraiya informed. Watching the frown on his teacher's face, the sage continued, I know that you're worried about Orochimaru getting the Sharingan, but I believe that one year is more than enough time. Right now I'm able to recreate his old cursed seal and remove it without much trouble, but with the proper time I'll be able to counter anything he comes up with. Saratobi turned to Jiraiya with a serious expression. Are you sure about being able to remove the old cursed seal of heaven? He asked. Do you think you could be able to use it on a person? Sure. Jiraiya muttered in confusion, not sure what his teacher was implying. Good, the third said with a light smile on his face. Do you know of Anko? Jiraiya's eyes widened in understanding, a smile forming on his face. Of course. How could I forget? He scolded himself, if she's willing to cooperate then I'll be able to get the curse mark off of her. Cooperate with what? Saratobi asked in slight concern, hoping that his former student wasn't thinking of anything perverted. Jiraiya smirked as he suppressed a laugh, already thinking of the consequences of his decision. I've been wanting to expand Naruto's taijutsu for a while now, he began, I thought of teaching him some of my other taijutsu, but they're just watered-down versions of the Toad taijutsu style. 
Anko's taijitsu is almost a polar opposite of the toad style, so she'll be the perfect teacher. I can already tell that this is going to end badly, Saratobi muttered as he watched Jiraiya smirk. Damn it, Sasuke growled as. He punched the training log in front of him, making small dents with each strike. Blood dripped from his knuckles, but he couldn't care less. Rage fueled his system, and he wouldn't let up because of a little pain. Sasuke was on the small training ground located on the back of his home. The Uchihas were a clan of ruthless shinobi, so it was obvious that they would have training grounds on their compound and homes. Something that Sasuke didn't understand was why most of the Uchiha had been living sheltered lives, hindering their progress. Looking back now, part of him was glad that those fools had been killed, but he would still have his revengal, not because Itachi had killed them, but because he had soiled their family name. The Uchiha glared at the log in front of him, remembering why he had intensified his training at the beginning. Naruto's power had grown to a point where it concerned him. Being overshadowed by the blonde idiot was the last thing he wanted. He was an Uchiha, the clan that held the most powerful ninjas. As he glared at the log, the cursed seal began to play its part. Black spots covered the Uchiha's left shoulder as he growled in anger. Gone was the dented log. Now Naruto stood on its place with a mocking smile on his face. The Uchiha snarled as Naruto gave a cocky grin, as if he didn't deem him a threat anymore. The Sharingan came to life, glaring at the image of the blonde. A loud chirping echoed through the Uchiha compound as Sasuke charged his Chidori with hatred on his eyes. He wouldn't let Naruto be superior than him. He would rather die than see that day. Naruto. Sasuke roared as he charged at Naruto. The chirping increased as the Chidori pierced through the image, leaving a gaping hole on the thick log. Sasuke panted before breaking into a smirk. He could feel his power growing, and he would put Naruto on his place when they met again. He would make sure of it. Shino kneeled on the ground of his team's training ground. Trees adorned the area with a small stream diving the area. It was a rather common setting of the Leaf Village, but it brought the bug user peace. He deemed it a good place to train and was trying his best to make sure that he wouldn't hinder his team again. The mission to the sound bases had been an eye-opener for him. It showed him that he relied too much on his clan's abilities. The enemy had rendered his bugs useless rather easily and had left him completely vulnerable to attacks. When he first came back to Kanoha, he had instantly spoken to his teacher, asking her to help him learn other types of jutsu. Through a small test, he had found out that he had an earth affinity. He had found some scrolls with earth jutsu on his clan's library, though it was a small number, and had begun his training the next day. I almost have it down, he muttered as he struggled to stand. He would make sure to fix his weaknesses from now on since he blamed himself for what happened to Kiba, his own. Teammate, I won't be a burden. Naruto smiled in excitement, still on his taijutsu stance while Choji stood in front of him with a wary look on his face. He and Team Ten had taken to spar once in a while to keep their skills sharp while at the same time familiarizing with their attacks if they needed to team up again. Eno stood on the side of Team Seven's training grounds with a smile on her face, watching the two spar. She looked a little tired herself, but for different reasons. Her training with Karinai had become more intense and required more chakra control than before, forcing her to not only train on her control whenever she could but to try to grow her reserves. Only a few moments ago she had been doing chakra control exercises and had used most of her chakra up. Let's call it a day, Naruto said with a smile on his face, no more bandages covering any part of his body. Choji smiled. Good, it was time to eat anyway. He said with glee as he reached into his kunai pouch and withdrew a small bag of chips. W what the hell? Naruto asked incredulously. I know, Choji answered with a sigh, looking a little disappointed. I couldn't fit the usual chips on my kunai pouch so I had to settle for a smaller bag. Naruto sighed with his arms crossed. Right, he hung his head and turned to Ino. What should we do now? Hmm, Ino put a hand on her chin, looking thoughtful. Naruto chuckled at her thinking pose, but didn't say anything. Why don't we go to my house? I'm sure my parents would love to eat with you again. Dinner slash parents. Choji and Naruto exclaimed at the same time. 
Ino frowned and crossed her arms, narrowing her eyes on Naruto. Is there a problem? she asked. Naruto paled under Ino's gaze. He knew not to say anything stupid when Ino got like this. He settled for chuckling nervously and scratching the back of his head in no problem. Good, Ino responded with a happy smile though she still seemed a little mad. Are you coming with us Choji? I, I am good. I have some things to do anyway, he responded a little nervously. Okay, Ino answered with a nod as she took hold of Naruto's hand and dragged him away, the chunin glaring at Choji the whole time. Traitor. Naruto mouthed to Choji, making the genin look away in shame. They might be friends, but he knew better than to approach an angry Ino. Once they were out of view, Ino turned to Naruto with an angry look on her face. Now that we're alone, she began, her gaze making the chunin gulp. Without warning, Ino took hold of Naruto's vest before pulling him towards her, locking lips with him. The blonde's eyes widened before he returned the kiss, taking in the feeling of Ino's lips on his. She suddenly pulled away, making him look at her oddly. What's wrong, Ino? Naruto asked in confusion, a hint of disappointment on his voice. Ino smiled. I know that you feel uncomfortable with adults because of... You know, she began with a hint. Of sadness on her eyes, I just want you to try to get along with them. Naruto looked unsure for a moment, but seeing Ino's pleading look gave him his answer. All right, he answered with a small smile, but your dad is still a tad scary. That's just how he is, Ino admitted in an amused tone. She held Naruto's hand, giving him a smile before walking alongside him. The two walked in silence, ignoring the odd looks coming from the villagers. They hadn't spent much time together since the mission to the sound bases since Naruto spent most of the week in the hospital. Tsunade had made sure that every single scratch on Naruto had been healed and managed to keep him from escaping the building. It was a comical sight to see Naruto running from Tsunade on a hospital robe almost every day. Ino had spent some time in the hospital also, but stayed only for two days since she only suffered from chakra exhaustion. The day she was fit to leave the hospital, her parents had taken her home and told her to take it easy for a while, having her help out on the shop with small things. Ino was of course annoyed at being treated like this, but didn't voice her opinion since she knew that her parents only wanted to make sure she was okay. Naruto, Ino muttered as she rested her head on the blonde's shoulder. What is it? Naruto asked. She looked unsure for a moment, but knew that they had to address the situation. Are you still blaming yourself over what happened to Kiba? She felt Naruto tense up and knew that she hit the nail. It wasn't your fault. He only tried to help. Naruto sighed. I know, he muttered a little sadly, but I still feel like it's kind of my fault. If I had been stronger, then I wouldn't have needed him to help me. Now he's in a coma and they're not sure if he'll wake up. I guess I'm only feeling guilty that I couldn't help him. It'll be all right, Ino assured, her hand squeezing Naruto's. When Kiba was taken to the hospital, the doctors found his head injury to be serious. The injury combined with the blood loss and head trauma had brought his body into shock before falling into a coma. Tsunade had been the first to treat the genin, but found that she could do nothing since using chakra around his brain would be too risky. It was all up to Kiba in the end, his mother and sister visit him daily with Hinata doing the same. She had been making sure that Kiba was comfortable and had been rather sad to see her outgoing teammate in the state he was in. I hope so, Naruto answered as he tightened his grip on Ino's hand. On the lonely desert surrounding the sand village stood a ninja wearing a gas mask. The ninja also wore a brown cloak that covered the headband he wore proudly on his forehead. The ninja watched the endless sand without uttering a sound, simply watching the wind carry the sand away. Crows flew high in the sky, circling the ninja, anticipating their meal. The ninja's brown gloved hands made their way into the pockets of his sandy brown pants as he walked away from the scene. Behind him the sand was painted a crimson red, a squad of gutless sand ninjas lay lifelessly on the ground with others on the verge of death, watching the crows in terror. The crows screeched before swooping down to claim their meal. The air was awkward around the Yamanaka home. Naruto, Ino, Inoichi, and Miki sat on a table with their plates clean of food. 
Inoichi kept throwing nasty looks at Naruto, the blonde sat way too close to his daughter. Miki was happy to have Naruto over and glad to find out that he was her daughter's boyfriend. Ino could feel the uncomfortable air of her boyfriend was giving off due to Inoichi's glares and motioned her dad to stop. And nice of you guys to have me here, Naruto suddenly said with a nervous smile, feeling Inoichi's gaze on him harden. It was our pleasure, Miki answered with a smile, right Inoichi? Right, Inoichi muttered with his eyes never leaving Naruto. He actually approved of the kid, but found that making him nervous was just too amusing. No wonder his father-in-law had done it to him when he started dating Miki. Well, I guess I'll get going. It's getting late, Naruto announced as he sat up and prepared to leave. Thank you for having me over. I'll walk you out, Ino offered as she walked after Naruto, leaving her parents alone. As soon as Ino walked out, Miki slapped her husband on the back of his head. What was that for? Inoichi exclaimed in surprise. You know what you're doing, Miki said in a dangerously sweet tone, making Inoichi gulp, stop messing with Naruto, I can tell that Ino really likes him. And what if I don't? Inoichi replied, but froze under his wife's glare, J just kidding. Good, Miki said in a happy tone though her eyes told a different story. The third Hokage sat behind his desk with a serious look on his face. Jiraiya leaned against the window of the office with a frown, thinking of a reason as to why the man needed help. In front of them stood Gaki, a sand ninja that had attacked during the invasion. He had come to contact the Hokage since they were in need of help. Please, Lord Hokage, Gaki pleaded, I ask you to forget our past differences and help us with our problem. Sarutobi nodded. I understand, but remember that we attack back. You coming here is telling us that the sand has gotten past our differences and we'll do the same, he assured with a nod, now tell me what's wrong. Gaki nodded as he closed his eyes. There have been reports of many of our squads being murdered on the outside of our village, he informed, earning surprised looks from Jiraiya and the Hokage, we can't send just anyone to deal with them since our village is in a state of crisis. Right now the council are acting as the leaders of the village and we can't afford to send a jonin since we're taking as many missions as possible. Sending a jonin would make our situation even worse. You want me to send some of my ninja to find the murderer? The third pondered with a serious look. As you know, our village is also taking as many missions as possible and most of our jonin are out on missions at the moment. Seeing the shocked look on Gaki's face, the third continued, but that doesn't mean I won't help. I'll send a capable team to take care of the problem. That'll be all right, but we plan on sending one of our ninjas also, Gaki informed. Who will you be sending? Saratobi asked in curiosity. We plan on sending Gara, Gaki deadpanned. Night fell on Kanoha, the village now quiet with a few people wandering the streets. Naruto sat on his apartment's couch with a scroll on hand. He read the contents of the scroll before giving out a sigh and running a hand through his hair. He set the scroll on the couch before sitting up and walking to his small kitchen, careful not to step on the many objects scattered around the floor. The blonde reached into the refrigerator and pulled out a carton of milk, careful to see the expiration date before taking a big gulp. Jiraiya had given him a scroll on sealing some time ago. It was how he had started to practice the art. Right now he found his next lesson to be more difficult than the others. It talked about different uses of summoning seals. He found that summoning seals were probably the most complex of all since they could be used in many ways and mix with other types of seals easily, making it hard to remember them. As he put the carton of milk down, he prepared to go back to reading, but was surprised to see a messenger hawk on his window. He walked over to it and took the scroll attached to the small belt it wore around its back. The hawk flew away into the darkness of the night while Naruto went to sit on the sofa. I wonder what they want, he asked himself as he opened the scroll to find an A-rank mission. He read over the details and frowned. From the looks of things it would be a quick yet dangerous mission. At least the team I got assigned is good. Life as a chunin is tough, huh kid, came the voice of Jiraiya. Naruto turned around to see Jiraiya walking around his apartment, looking over Naruto's possessions. Ever heard of cleaning, kid? Too busy, Naruto replied with a smirk. 
He ran a hand through his hair with a frown on his face as he motioned at the scroll. I do wonder why there are people like this. Remember that we live in a big world. Jariah began with a look of understanding. Each person has different ideals and have gone through different things. Many experiences breed hate and it corrupts the person, making them do stupid things. Then why can't we just end the hate? Naruto asked in desperation. Jiraiya smiled. I'm glad I made you my apprentice, he admitted. Naruto gave him an odd look, making the sage chuckle. I've always asked myself how to stop the hate, but can't find an answer myself. I'm glad that I'll have someone else looking for the answer long after I'm gone. Don't worry, Jiraiya-sensei. I'll find the answer one day, Naruto affirmed with a grin on his face. Gara stood before the Sand Village Council. They had requested him to see him in order to talk about the mission they had assigned him. He could see the hate in their eyes and knew that they assigned him the mission in hopes of getting him killed and saw him only as a tool to be used. Instead of just attacking, like he did before, he knew to keep his cool and not let them get to him. Naruto had shown him that there was hope for them and to never give up no matter what the world threw at you. He had taken those words to heart and would prove that he wasn't a monster anymore. There have been reports of our shinobi killed on the outskirts of the village. One of the councilmen began, we have asked the leaf for help and they agreed to send a team of ninja. You are to join them and make sure to kill whoever is doing this to our ninja. Also remember to keep an eye on the leaf ninja, a councilwoman warned, though they gave us their word, we can't fully trust them. They might attack us if we're not careful, don't be afraid to kill them if the time comes. Gara nodded at the council, knowing what he had to do. You are dismissed, a councilman said. Very well, Gara muttered as he left the room. The next morning saw Naruto preparing to leave his apartment. His chunin vest carried the essentials for an outside mission on the scrolls that filled his pockets and his eyes held a burning determination to get the mission done as fast as possible. He made sure to lock his door as he exited his apartment before making his way to the Hokage's office, where his team was supposed to meet for a last-minute briefing from the Hokage. As he walked through the streets of Kanoha, his eyes suddenly widened and his blood ran cold. A little distance away from his apartment stood Inoichi with his hardened gaze burning into Naruto's eyes. This is it, Naruto thought as trickles of sweat ran down his face. He's finally come to kill me. Can't say I had a very good life, but farewell everyone. I need to talk to you, Inoichi stated as he walked over to the frozen Naruto. He found it hard to keep from laughing at the blonde's gaping face. He wondered if he had looked like that when meeting his father-in-law. W, what is it? Naruto asked with a nervous smile. Missions, enemy ninja, and crazy pedophiles didn't scare him, but Inoichi struck terror to the blonde. Inoichi kept his gaze hardened before breaking into a small smirk. Relax, kid. I only came to wish you luck on your mission. Eno said she was sorry she couldn't see you off, but she's busy with her training. Your mission to sand. I heard that it was a hard one, so be careful out there. He watched Naruto look at him in confusion, causing the jonin to grin in amusement. Calm down already. Yeah. Naruto sighed out, a little relieved at being able to live longer. But remember, Inoichi continued with a cheery tone. Even though you're her boyfriend, if you ever do anything indecent to my little princess, gone was the cheery attitude as the jonin gave an evil aura and glared at Naruto, staring into his soul, I will castrate you with a spoon. Naruto swallowed nervously. I promise that it won't happen, he managed while sweating bullets. The jonin nodded before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Naruto gave a sigh of relief and ran a hand through his hair. Getting into that man's bad side would be the last thing he would do. Giving another sigh, the Chunin continued on his way to the Hokage's office a little faster this time while throwing quick glances over his shoulder to make sure he wasn't being followed. I'll never look at a spoon the same way. Naruto muttered as he continued on his way. Shikamaru inwardly sighed as he stood inside the Hokage's office. A mission had disturbed his holy sleeping time the previous night, then the next morning his mom had pestered him on doing a good job on his new mission, and to top it off he had ran into the loud Lee earlier, a truly troublesome morning for him. Now he waited for the team that would accompany him to the sand to show up, wasting the time he could have used to sleep. 
The door suddenly opened to reveal a grinning Naruto. Hey, old man, he greeted with a grin on his face. Sorry about being a little late, but I... He remembered the meeting with Inoichi and shuddered. I ran into some perturbing things. It's all right, Naruto, but make sure not to make a habit out of it. The third replied with a nod, subconsciously thinking about Kakashi's habits. Naruto chuckled before standing next to Shikamaru, giving him a light nod. We're going to be on the same team again, the lazy genius sighed with a playful grin. I guess it won't be a very peaceful mission if you're involved. What can I say? Naruto replied with a grin, trouble just follows me around. Now we can begin, the Hokage announced as he took a drag out of his pipe. Naruto's ears perked up at this, throwing the Hokage an odd look. Aren't we missing someone? he asked. The scroll said that three of us would go to the sand and meet with another ninja there. He's the third member of your team, the Hokage stated, pointing at the doorway. Naruto turned to his right to see Sasuke enter the office with a blank look on his face. H.N., the Uchiha grunted as a greeting before standing on the opposite side of his teammates. As you know this mission came from the sand, the Hokage began with a hint of exhaustion on his voice. Many of their genin and some chunin are being murdered on the outskirts of their village. They asked for our aid because they can't afford to send a jonin, but we'll have a ninja help you with the mission. Remember that our promotion system is different with us. Being more demanding, so you should be enough for this mission. You are to find out who's behind the attacks and get rid of the threat. This will be an A-rank mission because it will improve relations with the Sand Village, understood? Got it, Naruto replied while his two teammates nodded. Then you are to leave for your mission now, good luck, the Hokage ordered as the three ninja left his office. He knew that the threat wasn't too great since only low-level ninja were being killed, but he still hoped for their safe return, for they carried the will of fire. The Hokage got back to his paperwork and gave a sigh. The stress that came with the job was getting to him, and he felt more tired each day. He thought of retiring from the job, but knew that it wouldn't be possible until the village was back on its feet. Stepping down now would only agitate the villagers. He only hoped that he could retire soon. He missed his reading time. Naruto leapt through trees with a frown on his face. His team, consisting of Shikamaru and Sasuke, was ahead of him moving at a steady pace. It had been a few hours since they had left the Leaf Village and things had been rather uneventful. There were no missing ninja looking for fights, no evil organizations looking for destruction, or bandits looking for a quick buck, but then again it had only been a few hours. Naruto's frown deepened, knowing his luck things would go from normal to bad in just a few seconds and then to worse in an instant. He wondered if every ninja went through this one on a mission, but guessed that it shouldn't be too surprising in the world they lived in. Jiraiya had been right, there would always be conflict on the world regardless of what they did. Asai escaped the Chunin slips as he followed his teammates. Part of him was glad to be out on a mission since it had been almost a week since he saw any action, but the other part of him wished for a few more days of rest. Missions were incredibly exhausting both mentally and physically, and more than a week would be needed after the mission he had gone through. From the looks of things, the next mission would be no better than the last one. It had only begun and things were already looking bad. For one, none of them were familiar with the Sand Village or its surroundings meaning that they would have to trust a former enemy ninja to guide them through it safely. Secondly, Sasuke was acting a lot more emo-ish than usual, not even sparing a word. And finally, he had left his poor wallet, Gamma, all alone and out in the open. He was sure that Jiraiya would find it and drain it of cash, sometimes his master was just too unbearable. Naruto sighed once more, making Shikamaru snap his gaze towards him. Will you stop your sighing already? He snapped with an irritated sigh. You're starting to sound like me. Naruto chuckled. We wouldn't want that, would we? He joked with an easygoing smile. Shikamaru turned back to the path. They were taking, noticing that Sasuke had gone ahead of them. Are we almost there? Not even close, Shikamaru replied with a sigh as he took out a scroll from one of his Chunin vest's pockets. He opened it to reveal a map of Fire Country and its borders. According to the map, it's a day-long trip from Kanoha to the sand. Considering the speed we're traveling at and the distance left, we should be there a little past midnight. 
Good, Naruto said with a smile. Should we travel the whole way there? Shikamaru kept his gaze on the path before him, his map on his vest's pocket once more. Don't think so, he answered with a thoughtful look on his face. Remember that even though we took this mission, we can't be too vulnerable around sand since they were our enemies a few months ago. Call me paranoid, but I don't want to be too weak around former enemies. Naruto nodded, remembering his fight with Gara. If he was to fight the San Jinchuriki again, then he would need all of his strength. He still wasn't sure if his words had changed the San Ninja, but being too careful around him wouldn't be a bad idea. A single hooded ninja stood on the dunes around the sand village. The ninja's arms were crossed as he looked at the faraway village. His physical attributes giving his gender away, the broad shoulders underneath his brown hood and his large height revealed him to be a man. The air reeked of blood as the man turned on his heel, walking away from the village. Corpses of sand ninja were scattered around him as he continued to walk as if nothing was wrong. He stepped on the corpses without hesitation, stepping on the open guts of a corpse, causing a stream of blood to shoot off the corpse's stomach. The ninja had to get ready since he already knew that they would send ninja from Kanoha due to his feats. It was a good thing to have so many spies around the sand village since it meant that he could always be prepared. A few leaf ninja wouldn't stop his plan since his goal was too great to be stopped. He continued to walk through the desert, knowing what needed to be done. Gara stood on the roof of his family's home. It was nighttime, which meant that he had no one to talk to, which was a good thing since he had a lot of things on his mind. He was thinking of the mission he had been assigned. He was to help out a Kanoha team in finding and killing the ninja they had called the Red Death, since he left the sand a deep crimson color every time he attacked. While on this mission, he was to also spy on the Leaf Ninja and kill them if they showed too much interest on the sand village. In the past, he would have simply killed them even if he didn't need to, but now he didn't know what to do. He had had no one on his life when growing up, not even the uncle he had loved like a father. He became the monster everyone feared and thought that nobody understood his pain and motives. When he met Naruto, he saw him as just another fool, but it wasn't until their fight that he learned who he really was. The Leaf Ninja had shared his pain, not having anyone and feeling as if his existence didn't matter. Gara had felt relieved to know that he wasn't alone on the world. Someone had shared his pain and understood him better than anyone. When Naruto told him that he fought to protect people, he had been at a loss of words. How had Naruto forgiven the people that brought him pain? Why did he work so hard to protect those bonds? Even though he is still trying to figure out those answers, he feels as though he learns a little more each day. His bond with his siblings grew deeper, and they were not uncomfortable around him anymore. He was starting to see what a bond was and already guessed as to why Naruto fought so hard to protect his precious people. I won't kill anyone, Gara muttered to himself, gazing at the night sky. I won't be the tool of the council, he decided as he watched the stars, set on changing his ways. Good morning. Naruto cheered as he walked around camp, the sun rising on the horizon. He gazed at his two teammates and noticed that they were still asleep, clearly not minding the sand underneath them. Are you guys serious? He sighed out. Receiving no answer, Naruto ran a hand through his hair, thinking of a way to wake up his team. The Chunin suddenly smirked, his prankster side resurfacing. Shadow Clone Jetsu, he muttered as two clones appeared before him, both with mischievous smirks. Ino walked around Kanoha with a determined expression on her face. Her chakra control had increased as had her reserves. She was on her way to the hospital to find the legendary sucker Tsunade. Since her last mission she had wanted to learn some medical jutsu, enough to help heal Naruto or her other teammates if the situation came. The Kunoichi entered the hospital to see that it was a little emptier than normal, but it was to be expected since most ninja had been healed, meaning that there were not as many visitors. She made her way to Tsunade's office, knowing where it was since she had gone there when Naruto was about to be discharged. On her way there she ran into Hinata, carrying a single white flower. Here to see Kiba again? Ino asked with a knowing smile. Why ya? Yeah, Hinata responded in a quiet voice, shy around the confident Kunoichi. H. He hasn't woken up yet, but the medics told me that talking to him would help. 
Eno nodded with a small smile, glad to see that Hinata was looking at the positives. Well, I have to go meet with Lady Tsunade, she began, walking around the Hyuga heiress. She gave the other Kunoichi a confident smile. I want her to train me so that I'll be able to help Naruto out a little more. W8, Hinata tried to call out in a quiet voice, but Eno had already left. What does she want with Naruto? Sasuke slept on the sleeping bag he had set up the day prior. The team had made it out of the deep forests of Fire Country and was now on sandy terrain. As they had planned before, they had set up camp in order to be 100% the next day. He had been against the idea, but had still made sure that everything was comfortable so that he could sleep, which is why his brows furrowed in confusion when he felt way too warm. Now, Sasuke might have been emotionless most of the time, but, contrary to popular belief, he could still actually feel things. Which is why when he opened his eyes to see a bald, burly man on his sleeping bag wiggling his eyebrows suggestively, his eyes grew to the size of saucers. Aha! Uh -huh. Sasuke screamed as he shot out of bed. He glared at the man and froze when he noticed he was naked, WWH what? What's wrong, Sasuke? The man asked in a hurt tone, you act like you don't love me anymore. Sasuke shook violently, thinking of rather disturbing scenarios before he finally threw up in disgust. A hysterical laugh pierced the dunes making Sasuke snap his head towards the source. The man dispelled as Sasuke growled when he saw Naruto rolling on the sand, holding his sides in pain. You should have seen your face. Naruto laughed as tears rolled down his eyes. Bastard. Sasuke growled as he clenched his fists. Shu, Naruto shushed as he pointed at the sleeping Shikamaru. Sasuke glanced at the lazy Chunin and fought the urge to smirk. This time an old skinny man made his way to Shikamaru's sleeping bag. The two members of Team 7 focused on the scene when the clone suddenly stopped on its tracks, a shadow attached to its own. A kunai caught the clone between the eyes as Shikamaru rose from his sleeping bag with a smirk on his face. What just happened? Naruto asked in confusion. You didn't think I would fall for it, did you? Shikamaru asked as he dusted his pants. I've known you for quite a while and your pranks won't work on me anymore. Whatever, Naruto pouted before breaking into a grin. I still got Sasuke though. HN, Sasuke huffed with his arms crossed, irritated at having been made a fool of. Anyway, Shikamaru began with a yawn. Let's pack this up and get going. We have a long day ahead of us. Right, Naruto agreed as he made a few clones to clean up the camp. As soon as the clones were done, the group set off once more on their way to Suna. Tsunade sighed as she sat on her office's desk. Since she was the best-known medic of the Leaf, they had made her the head of the hospital, meaning that she was now responsible for it. She had no idea what had made her take the job, but now she was stuck with it, and to make matters worse, Shizun would always make sure she didn't run off somewhere. She glared at the pile of paperwork on her desk before hearing a knock on her door. Finally, a distraction, Tsunade sighed in relief as she cleared her throat. Enter, she called as the door opened to reveal Eno. The legendary medic furrowed her brows, not having the slightest idea as. To why Eno had come looking for her, what can I help you with? I want to train under you, Eno announced with her eyes full of determination. Tsunade looked over the girl with a careful eye. Taking another apprentice wasn't something she had had in mind, but something about Eno intrigued her. Why would you want to train under me? She questioned. From what I heard, you're training under Kurinai. I am, Eno responded with her gaze downcast. But I want to learn medial jutsu so that I can help heal those close to me. She turned her gaze to Tsunade to reveal the desperation on her eyes. Watching Naruto so hurt on our last mission and not being able to heal him made me feel so helpless. I don't want to ever see him like that again, so please help me. Tsunade sighed, understanding the reasoning of the young Kunoichi. She knew how Ino felt, a little too well in fact. It was how she had felt around Dan whenever he got hurt. She thought of giving her a chance. Why not? There was also the fact that there would be hard battles ahead and having an extra medic wouldn't hurt. Having more time away from the hospital would only be icing on the cake. Fine, Tsunade agreed, smiling lightly at the exited expression on Ino's face. I'll train you in medical jutsu, but I have to warn you that my training will not be light. 
Eno nodded with a determined expression. Don't worry, I don't plan on quitting, she assured with a grin. If I did, then I wouldn't be able to show my face around Naruto again. Very well, Tsunade said with a smile on her face. We'll start your training tomorrow at 11 in the morning sharp. Isn't that a little late? Eno asked with an odd look. Do you want to train under me or not? Tsunade growled, making Eno laugh nervously. I'll have my assistant Shizum take care of things here so I'll be able to focus on your training a little more. Right, Eno nodded with an exited smile. Then I hereby accept you as my apprentice, Eno Yamanaka. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Sasuke walked around the streets of the Sand Village. Their buildings were made of brown stone, and the streets were just as lively as in Kanoha. Seeing their headbands, many civilians threw them wary looks and others would enter their homes in what appeared to be fear. Sasuke smirked as he walked, seeing the fear people had of him made him feel powerful and dangerous. He turned to his teammates to see that they were both acting as if nothing was happening, simply ignoring the reactions of the civilians. The Uchiha frowned at this. They were no better than the weaklings that had called themselves Uchiha once. The two idiots weren't taking advantage of the fear people had for them. Naruto sighed as the three ninja continued to walk around the village. People might be shocked at seeing them here and saw them as dangerous, but in reality they were completely lost. The mission scroll the Hokage had given them had told them to speak with. Suna's council, what they failed to explain was how to get there. He had thought it would be easy to find them since important people were usually in the tallest buildings, but the streets were so narrow and crowded that it was impossible to know where they were. Jumping around the rooftops would be a bad idea since it might agitate some people and start conflict. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered with a lazy expression. Walking around a warm village under the scorching sun had never been one of the things he looked forward to. Finding the council was his first priority since it would mean that he could take it easy after that. He had tried asking people, but they just wouldn't answer him and turn away. The three ninjas turned a corner and Naruto's right eye instantly twitched. Now I know we're lost, he snapped in anger. In front of him nothing but sand, how the hell did we end up here? Man, this village is such a pain in the ass, Shikamaru groaned. Perhaps I'll be able to help, said a monotone voice from behind the trio. The three ninjas turned around to see Gara standing on top of a building with his arms crossed, an expressionless look on his face. Gara of the Sand Sasuke growled with narrowed eyes, his last fight with the Sand Ninja not being one he was proud of. Calm down, Sasuke. Naruto broke in with a serious look on his face, his eyes studying Gara. We can't get into a fight here. He's right, Shikamaru agreed. If we fight here, then we'll have several Sand Ninja after our heads, so let's not do something stupid. Sasuke snarled at the two ninja. Do you think I'll listen to some no-class shinobi like you? I'm ending this before it begins, the Uchiha charged at Gara, jumping high in the air before throwing a horizontal kick. As he got closer to the target, Naruto suddenly appeared before him catching his kick as if it were nothing. Sasuke tried to break away, but a Naruto clone kicked him away. The Uchiha landed on the ground with a growl, having no idea when the Chunin had the time to create a clone. He instantly stood back up, but found that he couldn't move any further. His eyes gazed at the ground to see his shadow a little larger than before, meaning that he was now under Shikamaru's jutsu. I told you to calm down. Naruto said to Sasuke in a cold voice, his eyes calm and collected, Jinin. Sasuke gritted his teeth at the blonde Chunin, furious at the thought of being inferior to him. The Uchiha hadn't thought much of Naruto's strength until now. The loser had managed to block his attack with ease and knock him away with a rather painful kick. Had Naruto become stronger than him? Naruto turned to Gara with a nervous smile. Sorry about that, but we do need some help, he lamely said in an attempt to lighten the mood. Very well, Gara began in the same emotionless voice, you're searching for the council? We are, Shikamaru informed with an irritated look on his face, his. Shadow still holding Sasuke. Follow me then, Gara instructed as he leapt away from the building, Naruto following close behind him. Shikamaru sighed as he let go off his jutsu, frowning when Sasuke glared at him. 
Remember that we're in a former enemy's village, the lazy Chunin began, this mission serves as a way to improve relations between our villages, this is our true objective. Naruto and I wants to pull rank, but if you jeopardize our mission then we have no choice but to assume our authority. With that the Chunin leapt after Naruto and Gara, leaving an angry Sasuke behind. Sasuke glared at the retreating figure of Shikamaru before following after them. They will pay for this, he thought as he clenched his fists. They only managed to hold me because I was distracted, but next time I'll show them the true power of the Uchiha. Naruto, Shikamaru, Sasuke, and Gara stood before a large building that had a somewhat similar appearance to the Hokage's office. The light brown building stood in the middle of the village, much to the annoyance of Naruto since it should have been obvious. You'll find the council inside, Gara informed with his arms crossed. Thanks for the help, Naruto said with a grin on his face. It was no problem, Gara replied with a light nod. Let's go inside, the sooner we're out of this heat the better, Shikamaru suggested as he entered the building with his cheeks flushed from the heat. Sasuke followed behind him with a frown on his face, not bothering to acknowledge the others. Naruto nodded at Gara. See you later, he said with a light wave before following after his teammates. The blonde Chunin found the inside of the building to be a lot cooler than it looked. It somehow kept the warmth away, and by Shikamaru's relaxed expression, he knew that he felt the same relief. They were in a large room with a few receptionists' desks on both walls, decorations such as paintings and coffee tables adorning the room. Naruto moved to talk to one of the receptionists while Shikamaru sat on a cushioned chair with an irritated sigh and Sasuke leaned against the wall with his eyes closed. He met the gaze of the receptionist and saw her flinch when seeing his headband. May I help you? She asked a little afraid. Naruto nodded. We're here to meet with the council, he explained. We were supposed to go over some details on our mission. The receptionist looked over a piece of paper listing many names before turning to the Chunin with a smile on her face, taking him by surprise. You're the ones after the Red Death, she said with glee. The council is expecting you. They're on the third floor. It's the only room there. Right, Naruto responded with a nervous smile. He moved back to his team and motioned for them to follow him. The three moved towards the stairs with Shikamaru sighing rather loudly. Stairs, he groaned, making Naruto chuckle. Anyway, what did the receptionist say? She looked rather happy. I don't know what she meant, but she asked if we were the ones after the Red Death, he responded. Might be the name of the person behind those slaughters, Shikamaru suggested. Might be. Naruto agreed with a serious expression. Somehow he knew that the name would hold true in the future. The man known as Red Death walked around the dunes of the desert, looking for his needed victims. The ninja smirked beneath his gas mask. A small team of sand ninja walked the desert with kunai on their hands. He chuckled. They were clearly watching out for him. From what he saw, they were no higher than Jinin level since he saw many mistakes on their formations. They were clearly adults from their height, an easy kill from the looks of things. Sand picked up around the team of Jinin, covering their vision. One of the Jinin watched the sand turn to crimson red before noticing that one of his comrades was gone. The sand ninja turned to his other comrade and watched as his body was suddenly ripped in half by an unknown force, blood splattering out of his body as organs and tissues covered the terrorized man. Do you fear death? came a deep voice from outside the whirlwind of crimson sand. The jinnin shook in terror. He tried to move, but found that his body refused to move. P please. Don't kill me, the jinnin begged with a few tears falling from his eyes. That's funny, Red Death said with a chuckle. Why should I spare you? Nobody spared my people and only helped once they were gone. Why do you think I'll help someone like you? The Sand Ninja gasped when a deep cut appeared on his right arm, running from his shoulder to his wrist. So engrossed by his wound, the Jinnin didn't notice the shadow appearing behind him with the outline of a scythe on its hands. Naruto and his two teammates entered the Sand's council room. It was a large room with a large circular table on the middle. There were a few windows on the room and many decorations filled the room. The council men and women sat around the table, all appearing to be veteran ninja from the scars and tired looks on their faces. 
Good to see the Leaf sent a team to aid us, a councilman said with a light smile, though it appeared forced. It's an honor to be of service to you, Shikamaru responded with a light nod. Let's just get down do business, a councilwoman said with a bored tone on a raspy voice. We're here to speak about the terms of the mission. Right, Naruto agreed. Your target has been nicknamed the Red Death, the councilwoman informed with a frown on her face. Nobody has survived his attacks, so we have no idea of his fighting methods. He is rumored to attack a small village a few miles from here constantly. We will give you a map when our meeting is over. We have no definite location on the culprit, a councilman said. You'll have to search the desert if you wish to find more about that. Person. It is unknown as he acts alone. If he doesn't, then you are to kill his followers. That is all about the mission, an old woman said. You are to start the search when you see fit. The ninja we assigned to accompany you will meet you outside. Understood, Naruto and Shikamaru responded in a firm tone. You are dismissed, a councilman said in a raised tone. The group of leaf ninja left the room, finding Gara standing in the hall with his arms crossed. Shall we get started with our mission? He asked in an emotionless voice. You are the ninja they assigned? Naruto asked incredulously. Receiving a nod from Gara, the Chunin sighed. Sasuke had already tried to fight Gara, and having the two of them on a team would prove to be too much trouble. Fine, let's get going then. Shikamaru suppressed a groan as the team began to move out of the room. Things were already looking troublesome and knew that there would be conflict on this mission. From the looks of things, Sasuke was still mad at Naruto and wary around Gara. If they didn't handle things properly, then a fight would eventually break out between them, and that was the last thing they needed in a mission like this. This is going to be such a pain in the ass, Shikamaru muttered as the team headed out of the building. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.